Hello and welcome to The Ojo Show, where we talk strategy tips and honest advice on how to play the most popular casino games. I'm Dan Grant and I've been playing casino games and working in the industry for 20 years, so I've been on both sides of the table. In this podcast series, I want to share everything I've learned to get you a fairer deal, the lowest house edge possible, and hopefully some better results too. On today's show, we're going to be talking about roulette myths, these classic nuggets of fact or fiction that you find everywhere in the roulette world. They cover everything from, is the game really fair, or I've got a system that can't lose, to I can tell what numbers are coming next. Some of these stories have been around for a hundred years, but is there any truth in them? Are there really rigged roulette tables, or can some croupiers really choose where to land the ball? We're going to look at seven of the most popular roulette myths, check the facts, and decide once and for all if they are true or false. Let's get to it. So what are roulette myths and where do they come from? Well, these are superstitions or doubts or beliefs about the game that are more often based on folklore rather than fact. They've been around since roulette was invented in the 18th century, um, but since the arrival of online roulette and social media, they've really taken hold. Because roulette's a game of pure chance, luck plays a huge role in the outcome. And and, and as a result, superstitions and scepticism are inevitable. In fact, gambling is a hotbed of myths and legends, partly because most people play for fun and they're not math nerds. And so they don't have a great understanding of probability and variance, which is another word for the randomness that characterizes the results in roulette. So instead of understanding how results can vary in roulette, we create our own internal stories and beliefs and then reinforce them by what happens. We usually don't question the game when we win. Um, and that's where we go if we lose. Um, especially if we lose in a way that we think is just impossible to be true or fair. So let's say you're betting on black and you lose when the wheel hits seven reds in a row, you might think that something strange is happening. We also like to spot patterns and give the meaning that most of the time just isn't there. And that helps people who deliberately create roulette myths for their own advantage, like if they're selling a, a, roulette, a roulette system. So that's why it's important to take a step back and evaluate these myths once in a while and make sure that we're playing the game with a clear and critical mind. Some of these myths are just total fake news and, and some have a little bit of truth in them that it's actually useful to know. So let's start with one of the biggest roulette myths of all and see if there's anything to it. Myth number one. It is possible to beat roulette. Well, you don't have to look very hard on the internet to find someone who says they've got a system to beat roulette. Plenty of players, including me, have one time or another felt that they've spotted a pattern they could exploit or maybe a croupier who's spinning the wheel in a way that lets me predict what's coming next or maybe a betting model that means I'll make a profit. But ultimately roulette is a hundred percent luck there is no skill at all the game's random and it's impossible to predict the future um regardless of what has happened in the past the only exception i suppose um is if the wheel is biased or faulty but that is extremely rare and what's more there's a house edge too so not only are you playing a random game but there's a house edge to beat as well so is it possible to beat roulette well in a way Yes, in any given very short session, sure, anyone can hit a lucky streak and win. Uh, But in the long run, no. No one can beat a truly random game with a built-in house edge and a set of table rules that prevent you from using betting systems. So this one's definitely a myth. Myth number two, and it's a popular one, this one. Roulette is rigged. So I've been going to casinos as a customer and an employee for about 20 years, and this is a view I've heard thousands of times. It's even more common when it comes to online roulette, um, I guess because it's easier to be suspicious of results when the numbers are being picked by computer software that was made essentially by the casino you're trying to beat. Is it physically and technically possible to rig roulette? Yeah, that's the short answer. It's not impossible to write software that tips the odds further in a casino's favour, or amend it maybe. Um, And in the history of online gambling sites, there are examples of rogue companies or or bad apples who have done uh, unethical and and usually illegal things with software. Um, But they are the exception. 
Um, what about in a land-based casino? Well, it's a lot harder to rig a physical roulette wheel. You need to find a way to control where the ball's going to land, either through magnets or changing the track of the ball. And even then, it's extremely hard to pick the right number and do it without being spotted by players. Now, I'm not aware of any examples of rigged wheels in modern casinos, and I would bet my mortgage that you wouldn't find a rigged roulette table in a licensed UK casino. So whilst it is possible to rig a roulette game, it's difficult and the risk of being caught and losing your gaming license and maybe even being prosecuted for fraud is just too big and outweighs any upsides. I mean, what is the upside? Well, the casino already makes money from roulette, whatever happens, and it's very hard to see why they would rig it. Um, regulators are also pretty hot on game fairness these days uh, and you have to report the outcomes of your online roulette software so it's very hard to do anything unfair without being caught now, I realize I'm saying this as someone who's making a podcast for a casino um, or, or in partnership with a casino so I guess I'm on the payroll but but by and large you know as a as a longtime player and customer and worker in the industry I, I can pretty much safely say that in the UK roulette is not rigged. Myth number three, previous results can help you predict the future. So this one's one of my favorite roulette myths because it's another one that looks at things from how our brain works. We don't like to think of the world as really random and so as human beings we look for patterns that help us explain the ebb and flow of life. Um, in roulette you get a constant stream of numbers right and in the long run let's say 10,000 spins or maybe 100,000 spins you'll get an equal occurrence of every number on the wheel in 10,000 spins you'll get pretty close to whatever it is 4,900 reds and the same number of blacks and 200 or so zeros but in the short term it's possible to see some really weird number sequences that you just can't believe are real or random but that is how randomness works there's lots of variation in the short term but there is a reliable distribution of numbers over a much bigger sample size. Casinos like us and our love of patterns and stories, um, and they show us recent numbers on boards next to the wheels, um, and with features like hot and cold numbers, they also use our love of patterns and numbers. So we create our own stories of what has just happened at the roulette table, and therefore what is more likely to come up next. But ultimately... The golden rule of roulette and all random number games and even things like financial markets is that past results are not an indicator of future performance. So seven reds may well have just come up on the roulette wheel, but the odds of a red or a black being chosen next are still the same as they were before. So no, past results don't have a bearing on the next spin. If they did, the game wouldn't be random. Everyone would have figured out how to beat the wheel and roulette just would not exist. So while we're on the subject of patterns in roulette numbers, here's myth number four. There are such things as hot and cold numbers in roulette. Um, nowadays, you'll often see a list of hot and cold numbers at the roulette table. That's basically just a list of numbers that have come up the most or the least, i.e. not at all, um, in the most recent 500 spins, for example. So yes, it's true that in any given small sample of spins, let's say 500, you will get numbers that have been chosen more than the average and less than the average. That's how randomness should work. Without it, the game would be boring. So the odds of any single number being chosen is 1 in 37 at our European roulette table. So it's likely that some numbers won't appear at all in, in your average 37 spins or even 370 spins. That's how it works. Let's take flipping a coin as a different example. If you toss a coin... 500 times, you'll see sequences where heads appears far more than tails and vice versa, but the results always start to even out over the long term. And with hot and cold numbers in roulette, all you're really seeing is a snapshot of results from a particular period. Hot and cold numbers just tell you what's just happened. They don't tell you what's about to happen, though, so a hot number may well not continue to be hot. Um, the key is not to fall for, I guess, the way that we talk about hot and cold numbers or the way they're labelled. 
Ironically, a number that's hot, i.e. that's beaten its own odds by appearing more often than it should, is actually less likely to appear if you believe in something called reversion to the mean. That's basically where a number must return to its long-term average amount of appearances. Some players think that a number that is cold, that hasn't come up for a long time, is actually overdue. And other players think that a cold number will continue to be cold. So it really depends on your own like personal view and the meaning you give to words like hot and cold. To me, in roulette, they're just a description of what has happened recently. And I avoid kind of convincing myself that they have any relationship to what's about to happen. So are there such things as hot and cold numbers in roulette? I mean, literally speaking, yes, some come up more than others. But does it mean, does it help you predict what's coming up? Myth number five, some croupiers can land the ball where they want. All right, so we've all seen croupiers land the ball in the same number on consecutive spins or even very, very occasionally three spins in a row. Or maybe they are landing the ball on opposite sides of the wheel on alternate spins. Maybe they did it deliberately. Maybe we've just spotted a pattern um, that they created inadvertently. So let's look at, at the job of a croupier, first of all. They spin the wheel hundreds of times during their shift, and they generally maintain the same body position and spin the wheel at roughly the same speed. So it stands to reason that the ball might land in a similar place, right? Well, in theory, if a croupier spun the wheel at exactly the same speed and started the ball from the same place and span it at the same speed, then I guess it could land in the same place each time. That's the theory. And therefore, a croupier with those skills could choose approximately where on the wheel they wanted to land the ball. Well, as you can guess from the way I've described it, landing the ball where you want is impossible. Yes, it's easy to start the wheel from the same point, and spinning the wheel the exact same speed is hard but not impossible, but then things get a bit trickier. Starting the ball on its way, let alone at the precise speed you need, is extremely hard. And even if you did all of that, there are still moments of randomness that are out of your control. For this reason, roulette wheel manufacturers designed obstacles into the wheel that the ball hits on its way down. And that creates extra unpredictability. So regardless of whether a croupier has these superpowers or is just a robot whose movements allow players to predict the section of the wheel, things like diamonds set into the body of the wheel and the rims of each number pocket, stuff like that just creates too much what they call ball scatter, too much randomness in the physics of it for us to be able to tell or, or, or for the croupier to be able to tell where the ball is going to land. So no, croupiers don't have the ability to land the ball where they want. And whatever they might tell you, I've met some croupiers who believe they have, but ultimately the results bear it out. It's just too random. Myth number six, some roulette systems are actually profitable. Well, I'm going to go into roulette systems in another podcast. So I'll keep this one fairly short. We've already covered many misunderstandings about luck and roulette. It's pure chance and there's a house edge of around 2.7%, which you just can't be in the long run. So what about the people who say they've got a reliable system that generates a profit? And yes, I've followed roulette systems before and even felt that I've created a few good ones myself, actually, that performed well for a while. Um, well, most systems deal with changing your bet size based on the result of the last spin. Very few of them actually tell you what to bet on. So they're betting strategies um, that rely on a good run of luck for success. In the early days of roulette, there was indeed a successful system. It was called the Martingale system. And even if you don't know the name, you'll recognize the system. When you lose, you double your bet and you keep doing it as you lose until you win. It sounds like chasing your losses because it is. But it worked for a while because as long as you have a big enough bankroll, you can keep going until you do finally win. I mean, it's pretty unlikely you're going to get 20 reds or blacks in a row. Um, so you will eventually win. But the key casinos caught on pretty quick and they neutralized this betting model by introducing table maximums. That's maximum bet limits. And if you can only bet a maximum of, say, 500 pounds on an even money bet like red or black, you'll hit that limit pretty quick 
even if you start at one pound. So although the world's most popular roulette system will work some other time, especially in short sessions, in the end you will fail and often you'll fail spectacularly and wipe out any previous wins. The same is true of other roulette systems. Each of them may work in the short term, but if you keep using them, you'll always come a cropper. And why? Well, because none of them tackle the real problem with roulette. That's the house edge. It doesn't matter what numbers you bet on or how much you bet. None, no roulette system has ever managed to neutralize or reduce the house edge. And it always gets you in the end. You can play roulette for free online. So if you think you found a profitable system, then just go and test it for free. Make sure you test it over a very large number of spins and track your results. And in the end, you will see um, that it, you just there is no system that will give you a reliable, consistent profits. And next time you come across someone online who's trying to sell a profitable system also you can ask yourself why are they selling it if it works they could just use it themselves and make a good living okay last one myth number seven the more roulette numbers you bet on in one spin of the wheel the better your chances of winning well this one's not quite as viral as the rest um, but if you go to a lands based casino you'll see this myth in action because a lot of roulette players like to spread their chips across many numbers some know what they're doing and are simply lowering their variance by covering more of the wheel some however think they're actually improving their odds but are they well the short answer is no if i bet one chip on red 14 for example i will only win occasionally but it doesn't cost me much to play and when i do win i get a big payout and that pays for all the losses um pretty much uh, if I bet on 18 numbers, that's basically half the wheel, then I'm going to win around one in every two spins, but I only double my money. The house edge is the same regardless of how many numbers I pick. The only difference is the experience and the kind of shape of your results. It's a bit like betting on a, uh, a long shot in horse racing versus betting on the favourite. With a long shot, I win less often, but that win pays for most of the losses. But if I bet on the favourite, I win more often, but I win less. In both cases, in the long run, we end up with the same amount of profit or, in fact, loss. Um, it's just a journey that's different. And it's the same with roulette. You can be a single number hunter with lots of patience, or you can play even money bets and you can like to win more frequently and you'd be happy doubling your money. Neither approach affects your chances of winning or losing in the long run. It's just a different way of playing. So that's roulette myths for you. A little bit of fact, an awful lot of fiction. If you want to know more about roulette myths or roulette in general, head to playojo.com slash blog slash roulette. That's all for now. Thanks for joining me and good luck at the tables. As always, bet smart and play safe.